invitation for me to speak at this celebration of World Environment Day. Uh, my slides should be appearing. Yes, no? No slides, can I show them from my end? I'm okay here. Okay, here we go. I just want to um, give us a, a, a kind of uh, hello to, to uh, Professor Shinawi, who uh, really is a legend in biosafety and biosecurity and our interactions also on the inter-academy panel in Trieste have also been so fruitful over the decades. Um, I'm honored to be here uh, among so many esteemed colleagues. Some are known to me, some are not, but all of us are gathering here to discuss this, this important topic. I'd like to start with a quotation from the great E.O. Wilson, professor of biology at Harvard, and um, who is known as the father of biodiversity. His research focus was on ants, but he also promoted a novel theory about social behavior and the evolutionary value of altruism. If there is danger in the human trajectory, it is not so much in the survival of our species as in the fulfillment of the ultimate irony of organic evolution, that in the instant of achieving self-understanding through the mind of man, life has doomed its most beautiful creations. His argument here seems to be that our own ability to understand so deeply the world has led to our destroying it. He ends this quotation with, and thus humanity closes the door on its past. So what I'd like to do is just take a few minutes to talk about the problem, the mass extinction, the sixth mass extinction that we have now entered. I think um, the professor has, uh, previous speaker, Professor Shinawi has, has adequately uh, uh, introduced us to this problem. Um, how does monitoring species and species diversity help the problem? How do we do it now? How can we do it in the future with AI? And um, we'll just go through a few examples of how that could happen. So let's first think about this problem through the, um, uh, and relate the problem of diversity to the sustainable development goals. A, state from, a statement from the 2019 Intergovernment Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity diversity and Ecosystem Services is found here. Uh, quote, the health of ecosystems on which we and all other species depend is deteriorating, deteriorating more rapidly than ever. We are eroding the very foundations of our economies, our livelihoods, food security, health, and the quality of earth worldwide. This report, published in 2019 was three years in the making with 145 scientists, 50 countries. Um, and its purpose was to assess the changes in the past five decades. So they looked at 50 years of changes in biodiversity and studied the relationship between economic development pathways and their impact on nature. They were able to see that we have lost more than 40% of amphibian species, 30% of reforming corals, a third of all land mammals, at least 10% of all insects, although it's harder to study insects, 680 vertebrate species um, have been, uh, have been uh, driven to extinction since the 16th century with 9% of domesticated breeds of mammals um, uh, under threat. That's about a, th a thousand different species of domestic breeds under threat. Uh, different breeds, an additional 2.4 billion population is estimated to uh, reside on the planet by 2015. So if monitoring can help these, um, uh, can help us somehow control these, this explosion of, uh, of uh, needs uh, for food, health, and quality of life, uh, let's see how AI can help that. How do we traditionally measure or monitor biodiversity? We can count all the species in a given area. 
that area can be a, a single tree or a single you know, cubic inch of soil, a lake, an ecosystem, a landscape, a region, or the whole planet. And for that, we rely a lot actually on citizen science, on citizens helping to count animals and count species and also research. Um, long uh, imaging and drones ha has been used to take pictures from distance or to set up cameras at sites and, um, and record animals as, as, they, as they pass by. Other kinds of diversity can be measured by genetics. So genetic diversity is the total variety of genes within a single species. Uh, and dem endemism can also be used. For example, uh, you, one can study a single region's range of uh, endemic species and predict, make some predictions or measurements about biodiversity there. And then ecosystem diversity, which is, num which is looking at the total numbers of different ecosystems in a given region. But really biodiversity is the sum total of all biotic variation from the level of genes all the way up to ecosystems and is often used as a measure of the health of biological systems. How can AI help? Here's a very quick primer on uh, artificial intelligence. It's the science of how machines can mimic human aptitudes. An AI is a computer system that has human-like properties. One kind of artificial intelligence is machine learning, which works on the idea that there exist patterns in all data that can be identified and used to uh, create so-called al algorithms to make future predictions. The machine learns on its own to make the rules, to make the al algorithms, and then follows them. And then deep learning is a subfield of machine learning. The machine uses different layers to learn from the data. Instead of just looking at data across a single a level, it starts to look um, deeper and deeper. The depth of the model is represented by the number of layers. And um, the increasing complexity of the number of layers means that we're, that, uh, that artificial uh, creators of, these, of this kind of, these kinds of deep learning models are beginning to approach the nature of, uh, of the human mind. So what are some examples of, of um, applications, specific applications of AI in uh, biodiversity monitoring? Certainly AIs uh, have been used in animal detection and in counting and in recognition. Endangered species, for example, are on the, on the brink of extinction require special and specific conservation approaches. So AI-enabled drones can report back to researchers efficiently about location and status of threatened population. Poaching, um, especially of elephants and rhinoceros, but many other animals, has reached crisis proportions around the world. And AI together with forest, working together with forest rangers and law enforcement can contribute to control of, pro of poaching. Waste materials in the ocean, such as plastics, can be characterized and tracked and documented and measured um, using image capture, gathering marine litter, inf marine litter information and sending it back to researchers and regulatory agencies. And then finally, um, image annotation for animal conservation. Details of, very, of not only spe species, but also of specific animals can be used so that the animals can be tracked with great accuracy. I should say here that one of the problems, uh, one of the sort of limitations in case we get to the, this kind of discussion of using AI is the, uh, is the generation of data so that um, one has to really find millions of photographs of animals such as these on the screen to be able to feed enough information to a machine learning um, algorithm. Now, while the, above, while the above examples rely largely on image management, there are increasingly sophisticated applications using AI that are appearing with great frequency. For example, the program descri descri described in this paper, improving biodiversity protection through artificial intelli intelligence, points out in its opening that not one of the 20 biodiversity targets agreed upon by 196 nations in 2011 for protection under the Aichi biodiversity target uh, agreement for the period of 2011 to 2020, not one target was reached. And that a more realistic and effective or fruitful policy or approach must be developed in order to 
produce a sustainable future. For example, with the global biodiversity framework <clears throat> in just this year in 2022, um, new approaches were urged and AI was one of them. So in this project, one, uh, one, um, one can, the, the proposition is that one can optimize biodiversity protection in a complex, rapidly changing world and harness AI to incorporate multiple variables, such as land use or new roads or climate change or short-term weather events and monitor and incorporate a huge number of variables to better model the, comple the, uh, the complexity of interactions over time and in multiple reason regions around the world. Other models of incre increasing complexity are shown on this slide. I'll just talk about the one in the upper left-hand corner, which is the time called the, the so-called time machine framework uh, generated by workers at the uh, researchers at the University of Birmingham in the UK. In this uh, framework, one goes back in time to observe linkages between biodiversity or status of bio biodiversity, pollution events, and environmental changes and so on, record what the effects are on ecosystems in the past. Once these correlations are totally understood, they can be used to forecast the future of ecosystem services, such as climate change mitigation or food proximity uh, provisioning and clear water, clean water and priorities what, uh, and prioritize what actions should be taken. An important aspect of all of this work is that these activities be globally coordinated. And in this paper, Navarro et al. describe the essentiality of uh, the essential biodiversity variables, some of which we've talked about, and how they can be coordinated through, uh, through uh, biodiversity observation networks, but that, but that there should be a central clearinghouse so that all of the activities that are going on around the world uh, can be, uh, can be uh, corralled into one, uh, one set of assessments and one set of strategic plans. Regular biodiversity monitoring, even with a degree of inaccuracy characteristic of citizen science surveys, further improves biodiversity outcomes. Artificial intelligence hold, holds great promise for improving the conservation and sustainable use of biological and ecosystem values in a rapidly changing and resource limited world. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I think it's a fascinating, like, I mean, citizen science, that sounds a beautiful idea. So I always miss Jersey beaches. So I think, uh, and now I will be missing the barbecue also. Fourth of July is coming very close. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is. So I think we should work, uh, I mean, artificial intelligence. This sounds so fascinating, I think. So we will go with the next presentation because we have a combined question and answer session. And uh, I will request uh, the speakers uh, like uh, Dr. Shinwari and uh, Professor Kanal.